Tesla. No, not that kind. Tesla versus Edison, the war of currents. Uh, this is a board game from our Tanya history. And I want to show you this game. Um, you know, when you think of Tesla versus Edison, the first thing I think of is electricity and it's going to have to be something with, you know, building circuits or something like that, right? No, it is actually a financial stock market type game. And so let me show you how the game works and I'll give you my thoughts on it at the end. All right, so here is the board for Tesla versus Edison. Uh, first thing you're gonna do is everyone's gonna choose one of their inventors they wanna be. So you could be Edison, Tesla, and there are several other ones in the game. And you're gonna get the matching cubes for that inventor. This is not gonna be a full teach of the game. This is just gonna be an overview of how the game works. All right, so I've got this set up for a two player game. You basically take the cubes, you're gonna start them at the beginning of the AC system, the bulb system, and the DC system for each character. So I've got blue and black here. Uh, blue representing Tesla and black representing Edison. And then you put them over here on this uh, company's fame track here. This is uh, basically going to decide who goes first each round. There's a little brown cube that goes here for AC and DC. This is the fame of how famous AC and DC is in, in the game. It can affect the stock prices. And this is your phases. So you're going to have three phases in the game and six rounds, basically. At the end of the sixth round, the game is over. Down at the bottom here is a track of all of the stocks. So you're going to start down here at the, the 12 for the value of your stock. And then as your stock goes up, you're going to go along this little windy track here. So it's going to go up and down this track based on uh, how much you increase your stocks. So if I go from here up, it'll go back down to the bottom, then back up again, and then kind of go along this windy path here as it snakes up, as my uh, value goes up. If your stock goes down in value, you just move it straight across like that. If it's up top here, it would move straight across and then down. So dropping down in value can go very fast. Uh, coming up in value is uh, much easier to do. Uh, all, right, all right, so what are you trying to do? You are trying to have the most money at the end of the game. Well, I mean, not really. You're trying to have the most valuable stock portfolio at the end of the game. At the beginning of the game, you, you each get a four shares of your own stock. So Edison has four shares of own, his own stock. He cannot lose that. Tesla has four shares of his own stock. He cannot lose that. All right, and you're going to get, uh, there's also other stock in the game too. There's uh, four other, or five, it's actually six other Tesla stocks and six other Edison stocks. All the other inventors, if you're playing a four-player game, everybody would have their stock in the game. And you can buy stock in other companies. So Edison can actually buy stock in Tesla, and Tesla can buy stock in Edison, which you might actually want to do. Uh, Tesla can also buy stock in his own company. Uh, you can never own more than four of a, a competitor's uh, stock. All right, so if you'll notice on each one of these cards here, it's got a, these little symbols over here. It's got the lightning bolt here, the gear, a dollar sign there. This one has no dollar sign on it, no, no number next to it, so it means it doesn't have any money uh, associated with it. And then the little horn there, or microphone, megaphone, whatever, with a two next to it. Uh, these are used in the game to uh, do tasks. So if I want to use my lightning bolt here and my gear, I simply say I'm gonna, what action I'm doing, and then I flip this card over to show that he is now exhausted. Next round, once we move up to the next round, he'll turn back over and I can use him again the next round. You'll also be getting more luminaries in the game. Here's the other ones you can draft in the game. You'll be bidding on these uh, at the beginning of the round. So I'd say, I wanna, I'll want to. i pay 1,000 for this guy. And Edison can try to outbid me. I'll, bid, I'll pay more. And you go back and forth until uh, you get your luminaries, what they're called. And whoever the last person is, is just going to take whoever they want that's left over for 1,000. This gives you more actions on your, on your turn now. Now I can do this guy right here, turn him over to do an action, and then I can do this guy here, boom, and he can do an action for me. Or I can combine them together to do one action if there is something big and he takes a lot of those gears or lightning bolts. So let's show you where the lightning bolts and gears, where they're at on the board here and what you'd use those for. All right, so one of the first things you can do with those gears and lightning bolts is go up on the AC system, the bulb system, and the DC system tracks here. These are basically technology tracks. So this one would take one gear and one lightning bolt to move up to here. So if I had a luminaire or a couple of them that I needed to turn over that had those symbols on there with at least a one on there of each one of those, I can move up to here. Once I get to here, I can also purchase this patent here. So this patent would cost me uh, $1,000, and I would put down a square here, a cube on that, indicating that I own that patent. Going up to the next one here, this is going to cost me two lightning bolts and one gear to get to that one. I can make two moves at once, though. So if I had three lightning bolts and two gears, I could actually just jump over here, jump to this one. If you do that, you can't put a patent on one you skip over. Uh, but I could put a patent here now for 2000 
These patents are good because when people are actually doing stuff on the map up here at the top, which we'll go over in a moment, uh, they're going to pay me money if uh, they're doing a, a project with my systems. Same thing with bulbs, they're going to move up here also, and same thing with DC and AC systems. You're going to want to get up on these tracks because you can't do the projects on the track up top here on the map uh, unless you're up on this track as far as uh, the level that you're trying to do. So, for example, if I'm on level 3 for bulbs and level 3 for AC systems, I can do a level 3 AC project. If I'm at level, say, 4 on DC here, but my bulbs aren't up enough, then I can't do that level 4 track until I get my bulbs up there. Whenever you're doing a project, you're going to choose AC or DC, but you, you always have to use bulbs. So you're doing some kind of lighting project, and you're choosing to use AC or DC with that project uh, when you do the project on the map. All right, so let me go to the, uh, over here to the, uh, the fame track here real quick. Let's talk about this for a moment. So this is where you'll use propaganda. That's where that little bullhorn is at. I'll show you the prop, some of the propaganda cards here in a moment. But you can actually use that to move this up and down. And if it's down, then when you gain stock prices doing DC projects, you're going to uh, add to that. So if your stock goes up, say, four, four places, this will make it now five. Uh, and as the further down it goes, the more propaganda has been spread on DC. DC is more popular now. And so your stock goes up twice. Where and also AC stock is going to go up negative two. So this is a way to manipulate the game, manipulate uh, the stock market uh, in the game. Over here is the fame track. This is the future and the present here. So basically what's going to happen here is if I go and move myself up on this track, that indicates that next round, this will transfer over. Now this little black cube is going to come up, and I'm going first now on the fame track. So this is basically a turn order, and you control that too with some of that propaganda. Let's take a look at some of the propaganda cards. So here's an example of some of the propaganda cards in the game. Uh, here's, here's Mark Twain. So if I use one of those cards, one of my luminaries here, that has that little symbol, the... A uh, little bull horse symbol there. I can actually kick off and use uh, some of these cards here. So uh, this is level two guy here, but I would uh, with level two one guy I could kick off level one with that horn there. But this guy here, Mark Twain's gonna let me move one of the cubes up or down two spaces on the fame tracks, and I can be either on the turn order fame track or the ACDC fame track there, and then also gonna get six thousand dollars. This one allows me to move the AC or DC marker up uh, two spots here, so it's just AC or DC. So Mark Twain here, what he does is he allows me to move the uh, little uh, fame marker up here on my track over here. And then we've got ACDC here. This allows me to move the, the ACDC track up one or two there. And then I get $8,000 from that one. Again, ACDC uh, with uh, $6,000. This is old Sparky. Oh, my gosh. This is historically, ac historically accurate, but also kind of sick. Uh, Mark Twain. Uh, again, so historically accurate there. Um, so uh, another really good part about this game is the money in this game. This is like... Nice thick cardstock. I love that. Good quality there. But I digress. All right, so the next thing you can do also is you can build projects up here. So if I decide to build one of these projects, I, your first one can go wherever you want. So let's say I start here in Columbus. That's a level two project, right? You look at the picture of the house, what the house looks like here. Look at the picture below here. You'll see that that requires $4,000 to start that project off. And my stock's going to go up four spaces on the track below. So I put a cube here. Now going forward, if I build right next to it, like say I build over here in Toledo, I don't, I don't have to pay anything extra. But if I go like two spaces away, let's say I go over here to uh, Detroit, that's two spaces away, one space away there, I've got to pay uh, money for that. So it's $1,000 times a round number. So you're going to pay extra money here to go further away from the location you're at. Uh, be careful with that. But when the stock goes up, then you'll look at the bottom of the board down here, and this is where you increase your stock. So that goes up by four, like I said earlier. So this would go uh, one, two, three, sorry, one, two, three, four. There you go. So that's four spaces up going along the little windy path there. All right. So that is where you're going to do projects. You're going to be putting these cubes out, taking up the cities. Once someone's in a city, that's it. You can't go there and do a project there. So those are kind of be locked in place there. When you do a project, you've got to decide, are you doing an AC project? Uh, or a DC project, and you have to use bulbs also. So for me to do a level three, pro level two project I just showed, I've got to have at least a level two on these tracks here. That's level two on those tracks. Now I can choose uh, either AC or DC, and I'm on both of those tracks, so I can choose either one. But let's say Edison had come along and he had bought the uh, patent in that. He had already moved past this, and he, he bought the patent in that uh, location there. Now I would have to pay him a thousand dollars for that uh, for that project. So. Uh, be careful when you're uh, select, selecting this. Getting these patents early is good because you're going to get money, but that takes time, and that's time you could be, say, doing projects. So there's a little back and forth there. 
After that first phase, you're going to pull out the cards. You're going to pull out another set of these luminaries here. These are the level one luminaries. You can see with the one on the back. Here's the level two guys. You're going to put those out. You're going to draft these guys. Um, and then there's the, uh, the guys that have the propaganda here. You're going to pull those out, and those are going to be level one ones and level twos also. So you're going to draft those after the uh, first and second round here in the game. And that is Tesla versus Edison, the game. Let's uh, come back up, and I'll give you my final thoughts on it. So that is Tesla versus Edison, the war of currents. And sorry, final thoughts on this game. First of all, the components are great. That money in the game is super thick and cardstock. That is great. I was, when I first saw the game, I saw it in there before I punched it out. I thought, oh, is that paper money? Please no. And it wasn't, thank goodness. It's actually nice, thick cardstock. Uh, and they actually have the pictures of the real presidents on there. So like the $50,000 represents kind of the $5 ones got uh, the presidents on there that are prop for each proper one, Washington, etc. Um, there's a lot going on in this game. I just gave you a quick overview of it. I didn't really go through all the details of it uh, because it would take quite a while to teach. Um, I, uh, on the back of the instruction book, there's a, uh, a player aid. Uh, I actually took the time to scan that in and print it up and laminate that so that each person in the game can have this. Look at the size of this player aid. There's a lot going on. So, and you really need to go through this on your turn, okay, what's we'll do in the first start? How do we claim a project? What do we, you know, we turn over guys now or next round? You know, there's a lot going on in the game here. How does propaganda work? Um, there's a lot going on. Uh, I highly recommend making copies of the back of the rule book to get the player aid out and giving this to each person. You don't have to laminate them like I did, but just having them printed up is very helpful in the game. All right, so uh, component wise, awesome. Gameplay wise, this game snuck up on me. When I first got this to the table, and I read through the rules, and we, st we started playing it, the first 10 minutes of the game, me and all my friends sitting there were looking at each other like, Ugh, is this any good? Is this, oh, this is, oh, is going to be a slog. And then about halfway through the game, it kind of clicked. We're like, oh, oh, you have to have the best stock portfolio, not just the most money. So you've got to decide when is it time to go buy stock. That's one of the other actions you can do is buying stock in, uh, in the other companies. So when you see this, this stock I showed earlier, the Edison and Tesla stock, you want to go buy this on your turn during the game. And that takes an action to do. So you're like, all right, I'm not going to go do a project. I'm going to go buy stock instead. Well, you're giving up the chance to move your own stock up. And you own four shares of your own stock, so you want that to go up. But you don't want everybody else to buy all the Edison stock up, especially Edison himself, because now he's going to be making bank at the end of the game on his own stock. So you have to decide when's the right time to go buy stock. You can sell stock too. If you're like, oh, you know what, I really need the money right now to go do these other projects, you know, it's going to help me out. I'm going to go ahead and sell, you know, one or two shares of stock from other company. That's great. You get the money, but now you just gave up those points at the end of the game because again, your stock portfolio value is the points at the end of the game, not how much money you have. And if all the stock has been bought in the game already, it's difficult to get any more stock unless someone sells some. Uh, so yeah, about halfway through the game, it kind of clicked and we realized, oh, this is going to be good. And we got done with it. We got we done with our, our a couple of plays we've done now. And we were like, uh, yeah, this is good. Uh, this is staying in my collection. This is a stock market game. There's another stock market game I've played in the past. It's a little easier called uh, Stockpile. A lot more luck in that game because you don't know what prices are going to go up and down sometimes. This one, not a lot of luck in this one. Um, I, I don't see hardly any luck in this. This is a straight up strategy game financial. You are trying to have the best stock portfolio, do projects, move up on tracks, get patents, and then control who's going in turn order. And every time you do an action, you have to turn over one of these guys. You have to exhaust this guy, and you don't get him back till your next round after everybody's finished. It's a, it's a hard decision sometimes. Should I go and get that patent? Is that, it's going to give me a lot of money in the game going forward. But if I do, then I'm not going to miss out on this project up top that apparently my opponent is probably going to go take before me now, and I want that project. That's going to move my stock price up. Oh, oh, but you know what? I can do propaganda, and I can move the DC or AC you know, values up and down based on the propaganda. So if he does do the project, his, his stock's not going to go up as enough. But they know that, so they're going to undo that maybe. So it's, it's just, just back and forth, which is trying to decide what you're going to do in this game. Highly recommended. Tesla versus Edison, War of Currents, stock market game that uh, if you like uh, financial games, you like games where you're, uh, there's very little luck involved, this is a game that you're going to enjoy. Uh, your first playthrough, 
You're going to need this. Probably your second playthrough. You're going to need this also. Player aid. Highly recommend that too. So there you go, guys. That's Tesla vs. Edison. You know what you should do? You should click on subscribe for me. Just click subscribe. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. If you like this video, you like this game. If you didn't like the game, if you didn't like the video, leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.